if you were to actually marry her and to have children with her? Would those children grow up to be super strong, healthy, active children? I'm here to tell you today that more than likely that's probably not going to be the case. And it's going to be for a few different reasons that I'm going to go over in this video. I'm going to go over five different things that I think you should be prioritizing before you consider having those babies. Before you go in without the condom. <laughs> so I'm not even going to preamble. We're just going to run straight into it. The first thing that you should prioritize is your hormonal health. Why do hormones matter? Hormones are literally what make us function. We cannot function without hormones. The reason why hormone health is so important is because when you have a chemical imbalance or a hormonal imbalance, you need to take artificial hormones in order to make up for that difference so you can function normally, right? It just makes sense that if you focus on keeping your health as a top priority, that it should also come as no surprise that you should be taking your hormonal health into the highest account. Because if you really think about it, artificial hormones are not the same as natural hormones, particularly the ones that you yourself produce. Your body knows itself best. So it is going to do its best to try and get you back into the optimal health range that it wants for you. So that is why it is so important to get your hormones back into optimization. But not only for that, but it also comes down to your two gems down there as well. When your hormones are healthy, your gems are healthy. And that way you have healthier sperm to give to your woman. And then that way you have a higher chance of actually having a healthy baby with said future wife. So that way your future babies will have the best possible chances at having an incredible life that you're going to be the one that was responsible for doing because you took care of your hormonal health. A lot of things go into play when it comes to your hormonal health. And the reason I'm like diving so deep into this first one is because I really, really, really need you to understand just how important this is. This isn't something that I'm just saying just to say. I am genuinely telling you that your hormonal health is of top number one priority. That is why it is first on this list. When you prioritize your inside health, you can then move on to the next phase, which is your physical health. Specifically with your fitness and looks maxing journey. Why did I put this as number two rather than number one? Well, if you watched through the entire part of number one, you'll know why. If you didn't and you skipped to this part just to see what number two was, please go back and watch number one. Otherwise, you could just click off this video because then you're not going to get any of the actual useful information that you need to make sure that you are healthy enough to have babies. So, with that little disclaimer out of the way, for those that are still watching, number two, looks maxing and fitness. You need to make sure that you are looking as good as possible so that way when you actually find your future wife, she will want to be able to just be loyal to you. This is bro science 101. This is just common sense. If you have a partner that you're attracted to and she's attracted to you and you're both just physically attracted to each other, there's not going to be any room for infidelity or doubt or insecurity because there's such a strong connection between the two of you that it's just not going to be any doubt that you won't have any issues. It's not going to be any doubt that you won't have any issues. It, it, there's no doubt you won't have any issues because here's the other dark side that a lot of people don't like to talk about just between you and me. When was the last time that you had thoughts of cheating because you knew that you could do better than the girlfriend that you had? I used to also be a settle boy. I settled back in high school for girls that were like, not my best interest. And more often than not, when I was in high school, I genuinely would look at like other girls that I thought I could get instead. And it really messed with my head because it gave room for temptation. It gave room for doubt. And it, like when you have thoughts like that, your girlfriend can sense that you have thoughts like that. And then she will get insecure. And then she'll start going through your phone. And then it becomes a messy relationship. So that's why it's so important that even if you are dating someone, you need to be genuinely so attracted to them 
that you will never have a thought about leaving them for any other woman that ever comes around in your life. It's just not going to happen when you have someone that you're that attracted to. But here's another thing that you're not thinking about. When you have your 10 out of 10 wife and you're both so attracted to each other, the children that you're going to have are going to just naturally look better. Because when we do our little mating dance and we actually pick out our partners, there's so much deep biological stuff happening in our minds that we're not aware of. And part of that is the compatibility, not only for just having great sex, but also for the compatibility of having great kids as well. The more biologically compatible that you feel with your wife, the greater the chance that you're going to have amazing kids in the future and you're going to have a really, really, really happy life with those kids because you're going to make sure that they're on the best course for their life and so the cycle continues. You could be the very first person of your generation that breaks away from all the generational curses and sets your new generational line up for all the kind of successes that the, you want in your future and their future and their future and their future. That's so cool. This isn't just a I want situation. This is a we want situation. We all want this. That is why finding a 10 out of 10 partner for you is so important. You see it happen all the time with couples that are in their 30s and 40s when they don't work out together, when they aren't healthy together, and then they get older and they get unattractive and then they lose attraction for each other. And then they just don't have the same chemistry that they did when they were younger. And then that breaks the room for infidelity. And then divorce comes in. And then the whole entire situation just gets messed up. So when you make it a lifestyle to have a good physical appearance, to have great mental health, to have all of this stuff, it breaks any kind of self-doubt. I'm repeating myself, man, but just take care of your physical health. Go to the gym, go work out, get a good body, get a good physique going, look your best, make sure that you dress to impress. Just do what you can to make sure that when you do actually end up getting married, you're not looking good just to look good to find a woman. You are looking good because you want to look good so that way you have a great foundation to lay down for when you have your future family because you don't want to be the dad that has a beer belly that's lazy that doesn't want to do anything with his kids you want to be able to play wrestle with your kids and do all the things and that only happens if you are physically fit so be physically fit so now number three this is where you go and find the woman right no slow down there kiddo slow down first you need to be not socially awkward this book right here how to Win Friends and Influence People, number one go-to book for learning how to win friends and influence people to be your friend. Absolutely a must read for anybody that's looking to improve their social skills. Why is this important? Because when you find a girl that you're actually really attracted to, you've been working on your hormonal health, you've been working on your physical health, and now you want to go up and actually cold approach women or warm approach women or do whatever you need to do to find someone that you know you want to spend the rest of your life with, none of your preparations are going to matter if you're just socially awkward and you come up to her and say, uh, hey, you look nice. None of this is going to matter if you just end up doing that. What you need to do is you need to go out and practice having fun and being smiley and being like open and ambitious and just having a good friend group to help hold you accountable when they see you veering off of your personal course. It also makes it so that when you do actually interact with other guys, it makes it so that you feel more comfortable interacting with women. The point is, is that when you have a friend group, you have you feel more comfortable, you can go out and talk to girls more comfortably, you can get into the game more, and you can have better experiences if you practice your social skills. The other thing about practicing your social skills is that it allows you to build a better business or to be more presentable on videos or to just be better at like even getting a job. If you have poor social skills, and you get interviews back to back to back, none of those interviews are gonna hire you if you're just really awkward at the interview and your answer was single, single word answers and you're not actually engaging with the hiree. Every single interview that I have ever gone to, I have always gotten the job. 
Uh, there has not been an interview that I've gone, well, that's a lie. There was one interview that I went to that I didn't get the job. That was just because I didn't have enough qualifications. But still, when I apply to jobs and I get the interview, I nail those interviews because I make the interviewee look com feel comfortable. I make them feel like I want to be a part of the company, that I want to advance things further, and that I'm going to be a good person to have around. Practicing your social skills comes into benefit in so many different ways, but it also comes into play when you do eventually have kids because you don't want to be the awkward dad that, again, doesn't take your kid out to go play because you don't want to interact with other people, or when you do go to the park, you don't want to interact with other people that have kids because maybe your kids like the other person's kids and your kid makes friends with their kids but then when you go to talk to the parents you're just super awkward and shy and you don't really know and then your kid loses out on friends because you didn't want to approach people and make friends which sucks so do your best to build your social skills now before you find a wife before you have kids before you interact with other parents because that is going to pay dividends in the future for when you actually do have a family so now number four, this is the part where we get to find the wife, right? No. Number four is financial literacy. So why am I putting financial literacy after everything else? Because honestly, financial literacy really only happens really well after you have already fixed the other three things. Once you've gotten your mental health under control, your hormonal health under control, your physical health under control, and your social health under control, only then can you know how to take your finances under control. Because a lot, like almost every single time that I see somebody with a bad financial situation, it's normally because either A, they don't have any friends, so they don't care about where they spend their money, B, they have really poor mental or spiritual or some kind of bad health area where they're spending their money to cover the costs of their poor decision making and their poor health, or C, they just don't know the value of the dollar. They don't know how to actually go about living their best life because they think that they need to match with all of these online influencers that are showing these Rolexes and their fancy rings that are all rented, by the way. But also another thing is that learning credit scores, learning how to invest into a Roth IRA, learning to get into your 401k, learning all of this financial stuff is so important because when it comes time to have a family, you don't want to be an apartment family. Think about it this way. If you live in an apartment that's affordable for you, it's going to be affordable for the kind of people that you don't want your kids to be around. Hint, hint. I don't think I need to say anything more than that. So what am I saying here? I'm telling you that you should be invested in a house. You should at least have like a two bedroom house or something cheap, something under a hundred thousand even would work before you actually get kids, before you get married, before you have kids, etc., etc. Now, this is a controversial topic. I'm sure you're thinking, oh, but Jeff, I wanna be able to actually get married and have my kids and then we can find the house that suits us as a family. Bump that. You don't understand the difficulty of being able to control your finances after you get married because then your wife is going, genuinely, your wife is going to want to spend time with you. No matter how hard you're grinding and working, if you're working 17 hours a day, it doesn't matter. It, she still wants to spend time with you. And a lot of times why infidelity happens in marriages with people that are working on like overseas oil rigs or working away from home, CDL truck drivers and everything. A lot of this stuff happens because when the men get home, they are so exhausted from their jobs that they don't want to spend time with their wife. And then the wife goes and finds time to spend with other guys. So don't underestimate the financial literacy aspect. Don't underestimate getting the house before you get married and have kids. Do not underestimate this. If you get married and have kids before you have the house, it is going to be difficult to even get a house because now you're not only buying a house just for yourself, you're also buying a house that your wife is gonna have to like and your kid is gonna be able to actually grow up in a safe environment. There are so many more restrictions placed on you when you go house shopping after you have a family that it just makes more sense to have house shop, to get a house before 
before you get all of this involved, before you get involved with having a family. Please, please, please take this advice seriously and to heart. Okay, number five, the final one. Find your wife. Now you get to find your wife. If you skip to this part of the video and ignored everything else, please rewatch it. Please, just please, please, please stop, stop skipping the video to the points because otherwise you're not gonna get anything from this video and you're just gonna click on another video that's not gonna help you. So number five, finding a wife. How exactly do you find a wife after you've optimized your in inner health, your outside health, your physical health, your emotional health, after you've done all of the maxing? What then? Do you just go out and randomly approach women now? Do you just randomly travel and find women to go and date? Yeah, you could do that. You could stay in your own city and find someone local. You could travel to a city that's a 20 minute drive away and find someone there. You could travel to a whole different country and find a woman from that country if you're interested in Europeans or Brazilians or Mexicans or Asians. It doesn't really matter what you do at this point. Once you feel like you truly are ready to settle down, you will know when you are ready to actually marry a woman and spend the rest of your life with her. But this doesn't mean that you need to wait until after you are done optimizing every little bit of your life. You don't need to be super duper autistic about doing this. What you need to do is just seven hours a week optimally. Seven hours a week, dedicate yourself throughout your entire journey from day one, dedicate just seven hours a week which is like a good two small dates or one big date per week, just to approaching women, practicing your social skills, practicing finding someone that you can date and have fun with. And along the way, along this journey that is genuinely going to take you a couple of years to do, you're going to find the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with. One, don't be afraid to approach groups. Two, if you're going to travel foreign, try to find people that obviously already know your native language. Or if you want to, you can go to like Duolingo and practice your Vietnamese or whatever language you want to go to the country that you're going to. Three, don't be afraid to just give out your phone number because what this does is it makes it so that the people that genuinely want to text you are going to text you first and that opens the floodgate to know they're actually interested in talking to you. But... Let's say that now you have finally found your dream wife. You're, you have your dream physique. You are optimized for having babies now. So now there's a number six. The number six that I did not link in this video for the specific reason that I'm pretty sure that there's not going to be very many people that get to this point. But when you get to number six... There's one last thing that you need to consider. Your life is no longer about just you. Your life is about setting yourself and your family up for the best success possible. When you settle down with a wife, when you get married, you are now a family with your wife. It is no longer just about you anymore. It is about us. It is about what we want together. And then when you have kids, it is about what is best for our kids. You can still live your own life. You can still have your own hobbies. You can do everything that you've already been doing. But just know that the moment that you say, I do, it is no longer about just what you want. And that sucks. It places new responsibilities on you. It makes you, it turns you from a boy to a man. It turns you from a person that's existing to a person that's helping to build a community. It changes your entire life. You cannot underestimate just how serious this kind of change is. I need to get this point across for you. When you have a family, it is not about you anymore. It is not about what you want. It is not about how you feel. That is out the window now. You are a man. You have a family. It is your responsibility to make sure that your family is doing their best to live their best lives. Because when your family lives their best lives, 
You live your best life, especially if you have your own business, contributing to your community, making sure that your wife can feel comfortable around you, that your, fit, that your kids can play with you. Everything becomes better when it becomes about others other than you. But I really, really hope that this gave you some insight into what needs to come first before you consider having kids. I really, really appreciate you sticking around for me on this, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Stay smooth and stay safe.